Taxi will be waiting for him. The longest lasting midsize sedan in its class. Introducing the all new Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. The General is not your grandma's car insurance company. Check us out. At The General, you can get affordable car insurance online or over the phone in just minutes, regardless of your driving record. The down payment and monthly payments are low, and you choose your due date. Get an anonymous free quote now. For a great low rate you can get online, go to The General and save some time. I found my true love. Living in a sweet dream. <laughs> what matters most should always come first. That's why whole grain is first in every General Mills Big G cereal and why we never use high fructose corn syrup. General Mills, goodness first. Why do you want a tablet that has free data virtually anywhere you go? What's that? That is poison ivy. Because you need to know what you're getting yourself into. I put it in my mouth. Get the Trio tablet powered by T-Mobile with free data for life. Only at Walmart. Zantac heartburn alert. Stop! Nexium can take 24 hours to work. Zantac's different. Zantac rushes relief in as little as 30 minutes. For relief without the wait, try Zantac. No pill relieves heartburn faster. This storm was like no storm in 50 years. Joey's pizza and pasta was all down the drain. There wasn't a spoon left. Everything was gone. My trusted choice insurance agent called to say, hey Joe, we're going to get you your money, you're going to rebuild your restaurants, and everything's going to be fine. Within three weeks, we had some money in our hands to get the ball rolling. Joey's is back, better than ever. For a Trusted Choice independent insurance agent near you, visit TrustedChoice.com. I'm Creek Stewart, Weather Channel survival expert. Every Sunday night, we're taking three regular guys deep into the woods. Are you serious? Where we'll teach them not just to survive, but how to truly live. What's your vet IQ? Do you know why vets recommend Minty's? Because Minty's helps clean teeth, freshen breath, and control plaque and tartar for a fraction of the cost of greenies. Now that's a good trick. High quality without the high cost. That's Vet IQ Smart. In the grip of muscle aches or arthritis pain? Break the grip with odor-free Aspercream. Maximum strength medicine clinically proven to relieve muscle and joint pain fast. With no odor, so all you notice is relief. Aspercream. Break the grip of pain. What's wrong with my hair? Everything. It's like a disaster. It's always too high. It's There's like some girth there. It's yeah. meaty. Your hair is not meaty. It's my meaty. Head. Shave it off to like the sides. He shave his head. He's got a peanut shaped head. <laughs> <laughs> the Sorrentinos. Tuesdays at 10, 9 central. Only on TVGN. H.H. Gregg Appliances and Electronics now has furniture, fitness equipment, and more. Trust the experts at BurialPlanning.com. Request your free burial planning kit now. America's Morning Headquarters with Sam Champion. Not just a morning forecast, a morning show. AMHQ with Sam Champion, the Weather Channel's brand new morning show. Currently in our area, 86 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, isolated thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 76. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 89. Chance of rain, 40%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Well, the last hurricane to impact Hawaii was Hurricane Aniki in 1992. Well, a lot has certainly changed since then, especially how we do things here at the Weather Channel. Here's a look back at how this network covered Aniki nearly 22 years ago.
Good evening, I'm meteorologist Terry Smith here in the Forecast Center of the Weather Channel's offices where we continue to watch Hurricane Iniki just about an hour or so away from making landfall across the Hawaiian Islands. Let's show you just briefly the area that we're looking at. Hurricane watches are still in effect for some of those northern islands. This hurricane is much uh, more fierce and with much stronger winds. Our hurricane expert, expert John Hope joins us now. The eye, it looks as if it will go right over there, uh, at least over part of the island. They already have hurricane conditions there. Senior meteorologist Stu Ostro, and he's been watching the storm with us through the evening hours. Uh, this storm is comparable to Andrew, maybe just slightly weaker, but a few miles an hour really is not going to make that much difference. Uh, not only with the storm surge, but uh, people remember that a lot of the damage from Andrew was just from the winds alone, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to see that sort of thing as well with this one. The early days of this network. Joining me now is Mark Elliott. And Mark, uh, the big difference is Aniki was a powerful Category 4 hurricane, looking at Acel and even uh, uh, Julio, not nearly as strong. Yeah, there's been some weakening trends on both of those storms. But boy, oh boy, Paul, what an active setup do we have across the Pacific. Four different areas that we are watching. The two of most concern, of course, is Azel and Julio. And then, of course, we still have Tropical Storm Bertha in the Atlantic. Let's start there. We've been looking at Hawaii all day. Let's jump back to the Atlantic real quickly. Here's where Bertha is centered right now. Winds near, at, uh, near 50 miles per hour. And the weakening trend and a speeding up trend off to sea across the northern Atlantic still in the forecast here. So no impact for the U.S., at least direct impact, some wave action, some surge. Uh, if you're uh, you know, still on vacation, taking a boat out there, you will have to be concerned because of the waves. You can barely pick out the circulation at this point. Still some big thunderstorms firing off, but no clear rotation here. This storm is exiting and exiting quickly. So now we go back to the bigger show here across the west and uh, across to the west in the Pacific. This is our Hurricane Izel and look at all these colors out ahead of it. That is some extremely dry air. In fact, starting to be the demise of this system. Notice even back when this loop started, the kind of uh, symmetrical look, the eye was right in the center. There were big storms all around it. Now that eye is even opening up a little bit on this water vapor loop as some of that dry air is coming into play. The stats on the Isel, 110 miles per hour, still a strong category two at this point. But you notice this uh, lack of cloud cover on the south side here. That's that dry air working into the system and the thunderstorms are indeed collapsing. Just another view of that. Look at the lack of bright colors here out ahead of the eye now. Almost an open eye wall compared to where we were 24 hours ago. This is a far cry for this system. This is uh, a weakening trend and that is good news because the track is still towards Hawaii. There is a tropical storm watch over the, uh, the the big island right over towards Hilo we do have that tropical storm watch in place but that's not the only thing working against it look at these cooler waters and that's the track right towards the Hawaiian Islands will take it towards the cool water so between the cool water and the dry air we will see a weakening trend here and that is what the forecast shows here's a, uh, a zoom in on the timing for you across Hawaii Friday morning 60 mile per hour if the storm can still have those kinds of uh, numbers Paul over to you well, our countdown continues. The number three video of the day, a sinkhole swallowed up parts of a road here in Redlands, California. That's about 60 miles east of L.A. That's after heavy rains eroded a flood channel below. The hole, about 12 feet by 12 feet and about 15 feet deep. We'll have more on this video coming up after a local on the 8th. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Blah, blah, insurance. Person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you get to a better state. Stanley Steamer is the first carpet cleaning service certified asthma and allergy friendly. It's our new standard of clean. Call about our $99 carpet cleaning special. Call 1-800-STEAMER. Stanley Steamer, your certified cleaner. Dentures are very different to real teeth. They're about 10 times softer and may have surface pores where bacteria can multiply. Polydent kills 99.99% .99 of odor causing bacteria and helps dissolve stains. That's why I recommend Polydent. Cleaner, fresher, brighter every day. How about over there? What does it mean to have an unlimited mileage warranty on a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz? What does it mean to drive as far as you want for up to three years and be covered? It means your odometer 
is there to record the memories. During the Mercedes-Benz Certified Pre-Owned Sales event, now through September 2nd, you'll get complimentary prepaid maintenance and may qualify for a two-month payment credit. Only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. Do you remember the hassle of vacuuming before the Dyson Digital Motor? Before it gave the DC-59 Motorhead powerful suction and perfect balance in your hand for cleaning those difficult-to-reach places? And before our direct drive cleaner head increased brush bar power by 75%, DC-59 Motorhead outcleans the five best-selling full-size vacuums across carpets and hard floors without the hassle of a cord. There. Yeah. Hot stuff. Uh, not turning the thermostat down. That's not what I was doing. I was just having fun. Come here. Nice and tight. Had a girl. There's a sweet spot. Oh, hold on, hold on. Get that, get that, get that, get that. Oh, that didn't happen in practice. There's a better way. Mitsubishi Electric Systems give you the temperature you want in any room with no ductwork and lower energy bills. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating. Live better. Go to MitsubishiComfort.com. And so the conversation makes Lay's Kitchen different from the rest? We pride ourselves on bold, authentic flavors with the finest ingredients. Our vegetables are farm-grown and prepared with the passion they deserve. Tangy peppers unite with the sweetness of tomatoes and onions to create our exquisite mesquite barbecue flavor. The satisfying crunch and rich flavors of Lay's Kettle Cooked Chips. One taste and you're in love. The Coasties are back. He's going down. And tonight, the Weather Channel is the only place to find them. Look off to your starboard side here. Brave Americans protecting our borders and navigating the graveyard of the Pacific Northwest. Out here, heroes come in waves. Coast Guard, Cape Disappointment. Tonight at 9, only on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 86 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, isolated thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy. Low, 76. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 89. Chance of rain, 40%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Sundays at noon on the Weather Channel. Well, Hurricane Isel is barreling towards Hawaii and Tropical Storm Julio is right behind it. Now we are tracking all the action in the Pacific to let you know when this rare double threat could impact the islands. Plus a stunning view from above. Check this out. Pyrocumulus clouds rising from wildfires in Oregon. Tonight, the efforts to contain the blaze is threatening homes in three western states. Hey there, I'm Paul Goodlow. We begin tonight in the Pacific with Hurricane Isel and Tropical Storm Julio. Both are on track to impact the Hawaiian Islands as we head through this week. But when will they get there and how strong will they be? For the answers, let's turn it over to our hurricane specialist, Carl Parker. And Carl, a rare threat out here. Two storms threatening the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, it is a rare threat, Paul. And you know, it's very difficult to get storms coming in from the east threatening Hawaii. That's because there's a lot of cooler water out there and there's also a lot of dry air that tends to 
weaken these systems. And that is what we think is going to happen with these two as they move towards Hawaii. So here's a look at a cell and the latest advisory from the Central Pacific Warning Center. Uh, they are actually the office that takes over at a certain point once it gets uh, far enough to the west. And uh, now uh, saying that this is a 110 mile per hour storm, a category two hurricane moving off to the west northwest at nine miles per hour. That again from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. It's no longer being watched by the National Hurricane Center in Miami. Now here is a look at the visible satellite picture from yesterday afternoon. And at this time it was a category four hurricane, incredibly well formed storm, very well defined eye, very symmetrical and a beast of a storm. Now compare that to the exact same time period today. 24 hours later, it's not nearly as well formed. The eye is ill defined. The cloud structure is very ragged in appearance. And then right in here, notice that boundary right there. That's actually because of some drier air that is wrapping in on the underside of the system. And in fact, when we look at the water vapor picture, you can see how that drier air came in. That's showing up in orange and red in this particular image. And watch as it just wraps in to the side there, the west side and underneath that circulation. These systems feed on warm and humid air that sits over top of warm ocean waters. And when there's drier air out there and it gets involved in the circulation, it weakens it. And so right now the forecast calling for a mid-grade tropical system to move in to the island starting late Thursday and going through Friday. But you know, it's possible that it may be even weaker than what we are seeing right here, just based on what's been going on here in the last several hours. So there are two systems lined up right now. One of them, of course, is a cell. We just talked about that. The other one is Julio. That's now a 65 mile per hour tropical storm and both of them taking aim roughly on the Hawaiian Islands. And so even though these systems may weaken, we think Julio is initially going to strengthen into a hurricane, but then it may weaken right before it comes into the islands. And even though both may weaken before they get to Hawaii, what they do have is this packet of moisture. And in fact, this is a computer model forecast showing the total amount of moisture in the atmosphere. And here's one of those packets that's going to come in with a cell. Here's the second one that comes in with Julio. Julio now may be a little farther to the north, so it could be that the uh, most moisture is offshore relative to the islands, but there certainly could be enough to cause heavy rain. And what that's going to mean, Paul, most likely is that there will be a flash flooding threat there in the mountainous terrain in Hawaii. That appears to be one of the greatest threats at this time. Back to you. All right, thanks, Carl. Back here in the lower 48, you got to check this out. This is a view most people don't get to see. This is a pyrocumulus cloud here rising and forming above a 51 square mile wildfire on the Oregon and California border. This is taken by the Oregon Air National Guard. It gives you an idea of the major challenge crews are now facing on the ground. NBC's Miguel Amaguera has an update on their progress. Over 1,100 firefighters on the front lines. The backbreaking work of containment. Just over the ridge, two massive fires threatening the town of Bernie. Over 700 homes at risk. Today, the chief for Cal Fire and the governor's office invited NBC News on an aerial tour. We're nearly all in the first week of August. We've got a long fire season ahead. A bird's eye view of the fire and its aftermath. When the fire hit this hillside, it took off like a blowtorch. And just around the bend here, there is more fuel to be burned. Even in light rain, the threat is real. Game plan is to make an aggressive attack, get the edge with Mother Nature helping us out a little bit. The two fires here have together burned more than 28,000 acres. Eight homes have been lost. You can see flames inside the tornado. Families like the Murphys got out just in time. The firestorm swept through their neighborhood. The family unsure if their home is still standing. Felt like we're refugees running from this fire. Two fires leaving a wake of destruction. A firefight far from over. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News, Bernie, California. 
As you saw, we have very dry conditions across Oregon, Washington, Northern California, but Southern California had some flood concerns earlier this week. In fact, let's bring in meteorologist Mark Elliott. And again, while Southern California is drying out, we're seeing the flood threat continue in the interior of the West. Yeah, there's certainly too much of a good thing when you get rainfall rates like what we've been seeing. And although we need the rain in the West, that kind of rainfall rate isn't needed by anybody. And because that same system is still moving through the Intermountain West, we are still looking at that chance for flooding over the next couple of days. We start things off here into the interior where we do have northern Nevada, Utah, up through Idaho under flood alert still as we are still looking at that potential for extremely heavy rains coming down very quickly. Again, we'll take the rain in the west, but we don't need it quite this fast. And you see this kind of broad counterclockwise spin to the clouds and the rain, which is what we're looking at here. That's the same upper level feature that brought the heavy rain to Southern California, which brought in about a day's time over six inches of rain in portions of Arizona and then caused the flooding down by Vegas. So it's done this big loop de loop. It's now back into California, but Northern California this time with some of the rain. And then we go into the interior sections of the West, Salt Lake City, Pocatello over to Casper and Denver. You two are getting some of this effect, kind of a kind of stretched out upper level low that is instigating these showers and storms. Now, luckily we don't have all too much in the way of extremely heavy rain at the moment, but even down here towards the Southern four corners, we're looking at some storms storm is firing up and you get into the higher elevations there in eastern portions of New Mexico, you could certainly get into some problems with regards to flash flooding. Here's another view of that uh, upper level low uh, kind of moving and retrograding back towards the California coastline. Some of this dry air, these bronze colors are pushing through the four corners, which will try to turn off your flood threat underneath the dry air while kicking up the storm threat into the center of the country. And so that's something we're going to watch too as our upper level disturbance moves along this jet stream late in the week, it will be moving towards the plains and kicking off those scattered storms. So our flood threat is going to move from the west to the center of the country. And that's where Kyla picks it up looking at the next seven days. Absolutely, Mark. And I'll tell you what we get into tomorrow. Cities like Omaha, cities like Kansas City and even St. Louis, you're going to be looking out for that severe weather. So if you've got tickets to that game tomorrow night in St. Louis, maybe to see the Red Sox take on your Cardinals. Could be a little rough there. We're also going to see some afternoon showers from Boston down to New York City and onto the Jersey Shore as we've got storms ahead of a cold front that we'll start tracking across. Now, the severe weather threat does start to drop a little further towards the south and start to press towards the east of so places like Kentucky and also into Tennessee. You're going to have to be looking out and also eastern Colorado heading up into Nebraska yet again. New York City looking good on Thursday in the 80s. By Friday, you can see you're looking good in Boston as well. 70s for you as we head towards the weekend. The rain here is going to be from the northern tier right on down to the southeast. Atlanta still in the 90s and triple digit heat for you down in Dallas. That sticks with you for your Saturday. But if you're in the northeast, say maybe you're going to the John Legend concert on Saturday at the Pavilion in Boston. Absolutely gorgeous. 78 degrees should be very nice for you there. Here's a look at your Sunday. Another beautiful day for the Northeast Chicago. You get a nice one too there. Low 80s for you with some rain from Minneapolis right on down to Atlanta and Miami. And you can see out west here, not a lot of rain on the west coast, so that's not going to help out those firefighters at all. Unfortunately, here's a look at your Monday, kicking it off nicely in the Northeast yet again. Paul. All right, time now to continue our top five video countdown. Number two, a landslide in Utah destroyed a home earlier this morning and forced neighbors from their homes. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, isolated thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 76. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 89. Chance of rain, 40%. Here's our seven-day outlook. When I had my first migraine, I was lucky. That sounds crazy, I know, but my mom got migraines, so she knew this would help. Excedra migraine starts to relieve my pain in 30 minutes, plus sensitivity to light, sound, even nausea. Excedra migraine works.
in the nation, the safest feature in your car is you. Add vanishing deductible from Nationwide Insurance and get $100 off for every year of safe driving. Which for you, shouldn't be a problem. Just another way we put members first. Because we don't have shareholders. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. What makes Florida's natural orange juice taste so uniquely fresh and delicious? Is it the rich Florida soil or the perfect blend of sunshine, rain, and temperature? Maybe it's the fact that Florida's natural oranges are never imported. They're raised right here in Florida and passed with care from our hands to yours. 100% pure. 100% Florida. Florida's natural. Try our new citrus smoothies in the chilled juice section next to our orange juice. What if there was a credit card where the reward was that new car smell and the freedom of the open road? A card that gave you that I'm 16 and just got my first car feeling. Presenting the Buy Power Card from Capital One. Redeem earnings toward part or even all of a new Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, or Cadillac with no limits. So every time you use it, you're not just shopping for goods. You're shopping for something great. Learn more at buypowercard.com. Check. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. <gasps> no! Energizer protects your devices from damaging leaks. Think the tree we carved our names in is still here? That's probably dead. How much fun is this? What? What a beautiful sunset. If you like sunsets. Whether you're sweet or salty, you'll love Nature Valley Sweet and Salty Bars. To you, they're more than just a pet, so protect them with Canine Advantix 2. Its broad spectrum protection kills fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes, too. Canine Advantix 2, for the love of dogs. So, Duke, what do you think of our new Bush's Baked Beans video game? I think I'm getting the hang of it. Okay, now pick up the specially cured bacon, hit with the brown sugar, now roll that beautiful bean footage. Yes! Bush's Baked Beans are slow cooked according to our secret family recipe for big flavor. High score! You get to put your name on the wall of fame. Whoa, game over. Aw, uh, you're no fun. Enjoy Bush's Baked Beans, still made from our secret family recipe. Introducing York Minis. A bite-sized new way to enjoy the full-size sensation of peppermint and rich, dark chocolate. New York Minis. Get the sensation. Breaking news right now. We're getting pictures in of flooding in downtown Albany, New York. This uh, somewhere under that road is uh, Broadway. And you can see the pictures. We're talking about uh, water at least up to the bumpers of some of the cars here. We're talking that's easily a foot and a half, maybe close to two feet of water. Doesn't take much more water than that to actually start floating vehicles. Looks like uh, these cars hopefully have been abandoned right there. There's a ground level picture. A big thank you to uh, Robert Gavin at the Albany Times Union for sending in those photos. We're watching this for much of the evening now. Thunderstorms have been moving over there, dumping some heavy rain. We've been dealing with a flash flood warning, meaning flooding was ongoing here across Albany, including Albany and Rensselaer counties, including Bethlehem and East Greenbush as well. That flood warning goes until 9.30 tonight. The radar is estimating over two hours. Some areas picked up about two inches of rainfall there. And so much rain in a short amount of time will cause flash flooding. you got to remember that we've seen our fair share of rain so far this year. So the ground well, won't absorb it as quickly as it would perhaps in drier areas. But the good news is that batch of rain has moved on out. But it doesn't mean that we are done. There's still some light scattered showers to the west of the Albany area. We don't expect that to be uh, a huge concern with more flooding coming in later on tonight. All right, switching gears now. We're going to continue with our top five videos. And before we get to number one, here's the number five through two. Number five, we've got a seal on a surfboard in the UK. Number four to Florida and SpaceX launched early this morning. Number three, a road collapses here thanks to heavy rain in Southern California. And number two, Utah, a home is destroyed in a landslide. 
I want to bring in uh, Kyle Grogan and Mark Kelly to talk about this. Did you guys see any favorite video okay. there from 2 to the 5? Come on. Of course, the seal, seal. on the surfboard. Yep. But first of all, can I just say, who knew they were hanging 10 in the UK? I did not know there was a big surf environment there. Yeah, I mean, especially when the, uh, when the tropics get active, basically all the remnants from our storms wind up going towards the UK. So they get the wave action with that long swath across the, uh, across the Atlantic. And Bertha could eventually bring more waves to the yeah. UK as well. But a lot of people are saying that, hey, you know, seals and, and sea lions, they get out of the water when sharks yeah, are nearby. Yeah, that's the danger there, it's right? Like, but save save so yourself. Cute. I'm on the board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe that's what he's doing. He's saying, hey, good luck in the water. You know, live, live yeah. a couple hours in my shoes or my he flippers. He is huh? yeah. simply the cutest thing ever, though. I mean, I have to say, that wins hands down. Yeah. Hands down. That, although, and, although, I will say, uh, the weather nerd in me, seeing those landslide uh, images in is just incredible. The power of all that moving land. Yeah, and just the fact that it took out an entire house like that, you saw before and after picture of that, yeah. it's kind of unbelievable when you yeah, look at the, it. Yeah, the power of what can happen on uh, Earth. We saw what happened tragically across uh, parts of western Washington earlier this year, so we're not on that scale, but definitely, you know, these were people's homes. It's, they're their castles, and now, you know, it, yeah. it's and you know, such they're, a scary sight. They're relatively new homes, too, mm -hmm. so it, it's such a shame to see this. It is just, and it's the power of it, right really. Right there, I mean, the that view. It, just that whole yeah. slab gave way in the background. You can see that kind of sheared off face and then all that dirt just rolls and down. And you see the way it knocked the house apart as if it was made of blocks, you know, yeah. as if it was nothing. It That's just popped it right apart. Again, we're just minions out here. All right, now for number one, our number one, vid one, number one video comes from uh, Nevada again. And check this out. I mean, pretty incredible video here. Water came down a median swiping and sweeping a Ford into the wash here. At the same time, an elderly couple, they were stuck in a Prius. And you see those people out there helping them through. A lot of them were men and women from the Air Force. That who, guy on the left there, though, you see how he just gets dragged yeah, down, he how did swift get this down. water is? His feet are taken right out from him, but his friends are there kind of waiting for it, Thank and goodness. they grab him out of the water. But man, look at the power there. You know, and that's the thing. I, you guys know I've lived in the Southwest. I lived in Las Vegas, and this was outside of Las Vegas, looks like in the highway areas there. And part of the problem is you get a lot of people moving there from other places that just, you know, like me, when I moved there from the Northeast, I was, okay, it's raining, big deal. This is the big deal. This happens so fast, you cannot begin to believe and it. And it only rains a couple of days out of the year. 99% right. of the time, those are dry roads and dry arroyos, right. and there's no water in, in sight, and then this of happens. of course, this is the problem. Because yeah. it's so dry all the time, the ground does not absorb the water. Yeah. It literally runs off and flies, as you can see here. I mean, that looks like the most raging river that you would see anywhere. That water's easily probably going up maybe uh, 10 to 12 miles an At hour. Yeah. It, only is... takes, it only takes six inches of moving water to knock a, a, an average adult off their feet. And water moving at four miles per hour? Same force as an EF2 tornado. Wow. Yeah. So 12 miles an hour, yeah, incredible Those damage. Those cars had no chance. Easy no. float that. All right, thanks, guys. Well, it is definitely a, a lot of busy activity going on right now across the tropics, including the Pacific Ocean, where we are watching a tropical storm and a hurricane that could impact Hawaii in just a few days. Our hurricane specialist, Carl Parker, has the timing on both Estelle and Julio. That's next. And now tonight's weather IQ question. Since records have been kept, has there ever been an Atlantic hurricane season when there were no named storms? Yes or no? Think about that one. We'll have the answer coming up right after your local on the eights in about three and a half minutes. Right on cue. than just a meal. It's Meow Mix Meal Time. With 100% complete and balanced nutrition and the taste, textures, and variety cats love. It's the only one cats ask for by name. I'm Creek Stewart, Weather Channel survival expert. Every Sunday night, we're taking three regular guys deep into the woods. Are you serious? Where we'll teach them not just to survive, so make fire, but how to truly live. Look at this caveman. Show yourself what you're made of on Weather Channel Survival Sundays. At 9, it's So You Think You'd Survive. Then at 10, Fat Guys in the Woods. Premiering Sunday at 10 on the Weather Channel. Are you ready? Off the couch, into the weather. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
tonight, isolated thunderstorms early, then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 76. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 89. Chance of rain, 40%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Why do you want Intel-powered computers with special financing? Wasn't my dress cute? Everyone getting their work done? Oh, you betcha. Reply all. Busy, busy. And in conclusion... Because your family needs to always be productive. Boom. Well... Oh, no. Almost always. Get the HP All-in-One and now unroll back the Toshiba Touch with special financing with your Walmart credit card. The Intel processing power you want. Online and in-store. Save money. Live better. Walmart. With diabetes, it's tough to keep life balanced. I don't always have time to eat like I should. That's why I like Lucerta Shakes. They have slowly digestible carbs to help minimize blood sugar spikes. Glucerna, the number one doctor-recommended brand. With Crizal No Glare lenses, neither water, nor scratch, nor smudge, nor glare of night can keep you from the clearest vision possible. And Crizal has ESPF 25 to protect your eyes from the damaging rays of the sun. Crizal, live life in the clear. Some question physics. Some question gravity. And some even have the audacity to question improbability. These are some of the bold new Ram commercial trucks. Built. Ha! Ah, got it. These Wi Fi hotspots we get with our Xfinity internet service are all over the place. Hey, you can stop looking. I found one. See? What do you think a Wi-Fi hotspot smells like? I think you roast beef. You want to get lunch? Get the fastest Wi-Fi hotspots and more coverage on the go than any other provider. Xfinity, the future of awesome. The Indian River Lagoon is 156 miles long, representing recreation, fishing, and nearly 20,000 Florida jobs. Last summer, because of dumping in Lake Okeechobee, the lagoon turned green and murky. I call it a disaster. So we pull together to stop the dumping with record funding that will protect this vital resource and our jobs. Joe Negron had it in his heart to do what's right for this lagoon. It's our future. Joe Negron, coming through for us. $129 a year. For an agent, call 1-88-RAIN-914. Mondays, only the Weather Channel takes you this far. Inside a hurricane. Hurricane 360, premiering August 18th at 9 on the Weather Channel. All right, let's get back to tonight's Weather IQ question. Since records have been kept, has there ever been an Atlantic hurricane season when there have been no named storms? Yes or no? Well, the answer is no. There have been years, though, when we've had no hurricanes. The 1914, even 1907 seasons did not produce any hurricanes. In fact, the 1914 season was the least active Atlantic hurricane season on record with only one official tropical cyclone, but no hurricanes that year at all. But so far this year, we've had two hurricanes in the Atlantic, and uh, Bertha is no longer a hurricane, but we're really focused on what's going on in the Pacific. We want to bring in a uh, hurricane specialist, Carl Parker, and Hawaii. We've been talking about it. We not only have uh, now, Hurricane Isel, you have tropical, tropical Storm Julio, which also could be a hurricane pretty quickly, yep. both threatening the islands. They are, but, you know, I'll tell you, Isel is going down fast, and uh, we'll see what happens with Julio. There's a lot in the way of hostile conditions out there, and you'll really see that here when we look at the water vapor picture. So right now, what we've got officially is a 110-mile-per-hour storm. I, I don't know that it's uh, even there at this point. It's now being, uh, the advisories are being written by the Central Pacific Hurricane Center now that it's crossed 140 west longitude, and uh, it's moving west-northwest 
southwest at nine miles per hour. Now, I want to show you the satellite picture over the last 24 hours. Very well formed storm 24 hours ago. You can see how symmetrical it was. You can see the very well defined eye. And look what has happened at the end of this loop. And we'll zoom in and look at just the last few hours. It looks like the western part of the eye wall is starting to open up. And that is because of drier air that's wrapping into the system. So these systems feed on warm and humid air that sits over top of warm ocean water. When you don't have that, you're not going to have any strengthening. And in fact, you'll get weakening. And this area right here in orange and red, that is the dry air. And watch as it just wraps down and wraps right into that circulation. There's a lot of dry air out there. And so this thing has to get not through only that, not only the dry air, but on top of that, there are cooler sea surface temperatures. And this is really concordant with that drier air. You have both of these things sort of living together, the cooler water. And generally, when your water temperatures are in the 70s, then uh, you're going to see weakening of tropical systems. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. It's going to be crossing over these areas where the water temperatures are in the 70s, the upper 70s, in addition to that dry air. So this may actually be ambitious. And again, this is the reason why we keep saying that this is so rare for Hawaii to be threatened by a hurricane or tropical storm coming in from the east. Because yeah. It has to get through the dry air, but mainly get over so much colder water, which is actually the east of Hawaii. People think Hawaii, oh, it's got to be hot water, tropical water all over, but east of there, it's not. It's not at all, and, and that's a big part of why it's got such a tempered climate. And as you look to the south of Hawaii, there's the warm water, and exactly as you mentioned, all of the more serious storms that have hit in the past have come up from the south. So uh, I don't know that we're necessarily going to see that strong of a storm in Hawaii, but there certainly could be some heavier rain. Now, there are two systems out there. There's a cell and there's Julio. Both of these storms taking aim on Hawaii. More recent computer model guidance indicating that Julio may pass just to the north of the islands, but both of these systems are going to have this packet of moisture. Even if they are weaker, there's going to be moisture that comes up, first of all, with the cell, and then second of all, with Julio. Julio, and along with that moisture, we could be talking about some very heavy rain. And an important part about Hawaii is that there is a lot of very steep terrain. And here's a look at a couple of photographs from Kauai and just a shockingly beautiful place. And you can see how steep the terrain is here. That's been shaped and carved over millions of years by heavy rain that occurs on the north and east sides of the islands. And, and look at the elevation here and you see how it just comes down really quickly. So I Obviously, when you've got terrain like that and you add a lot of heavy rain, then you're going to have this risk of flash flooding. So even if these systems are weaker systems, it's entirely possible that we'll get some flash flooding out of them. Yeah, and also pretty rare to even be impacted because since, what, 1950, we have had eight named systems impact the islands, and now we're gonna have two back to back. Yeah, you know, the islands are very small, and the area that's the worst part of the storm is very small, so we've actually only had two direct impacts from hurricanes there in Hawaii. Uh, one more thing to tell you about, and that is Tropical Storm Bertha. It's now uh, off the East Coast, more than 200 miles away from North Carolina, winds 50 miles per hour, moving north, northeast at 21 miles per hour, and it's gonna race out into the North Atlantic, may just graze Newfoundland. But rip current risks still high across the east coast of the U.S. That's right. Watch out, Beach Coast. Thanks, Carl. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, we're back in one minute with a look at the storms that are popping up across the lower 48 and one the ones we're watching as perhaps you start thinking about heading to bed. That's all coming up right after this quick break. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Tonight, isolated thunderstorms early then partly cloudy after midnight. Low, 76. Chance of rain, 30%. Wednesday, thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. High, 89. Chance of rain, 40%. Here's our seven-day outlook.
there, everyone. We are keeping an eye out for flash flooding concerns in upstate New York. You see the showers still rolling across I-81, and these are where the flash flooding concerns are right now. This is Albany and Rensselaer counties until 9.30 p.m. as this rain's been coming down very quickly. So please be careful. Hopefully you don't have to drive in this. Broome County, you as well. That's just to the east of Binghamton. Then let's head down south where some severe thunderstorms are firing up in Mississippi. You can see right here Stone County. So that is north of places like Saucier and south of Wiggins. And then we're going to head further out to the west where we've also got flooding concerns in places like just south of Elko, Nevada, also up into Utah and over into Idaho and around Pocatello. But we also have a severe thunderstorm warning, this one to the east of Boise. This is Ada, Boise, and Elmore counties until 6.30 p.m. And this part of the country, this is what we're going to keep an eye on tonight because we expect this could get a little bit worse. South Dakota, you can see we have a severe thunderstorm warning for you right here. This one is in Gregory County. So stay with us, everybody. We're going to update you throughout the night. Right now, we send you over to Weather Caught on Camera. A death-defying race with a tornado. Let's go, let's go. A desperate scramble to safety. Let's go, let's go. All of nature's glory on display. I was like, oh my God, what is that? From tempting fate with a volcano. Two meters. Oh my God. To a look at some unforgiving. Look for Tim! Look for Tim! And unusual winter phenomenons. It's all here. Brace yourself. We're being attacked by tumbleweed! For this breathtaking edition. Oh my god, the water's at the top of the wall, you guys. Of weather caught on camera. century-old dike collapses. Everybody's being evacuated. Unleashing a massive surge of water and mud into an unsuspecting neighborhood. Campers going, floating down the river. You just cannot believe that water would do that much damage in such a short period of time. Water's at the top of the wall, you guys. Santa Clara, Utah, a small desert town that averages 260 days of sunshine a year. But on September 11, 2012, local resident Denise Webster recalls a serious storm blew into town. It just kept raining and kept raining, and it was, it was a really steady downpour. Then it gets more intense with the... More than three inches of rain, three months' worth of precipitation in southern Utah falls in a single day and overwhelms drainage systems, including an aging dike near the Santa Clara baseball fields. That dike was constructed in the early 1900s. It's an earthen dam, a dike that they had just built with uh, dirt and rock stacked on the outside. A deep lake of muddy water collects behind the wall until finally the weight of the intense rain becomes too much for the 93-year-old dike and it begins to collapse. Denise is on her way to work. This is crazy. And with her cell phone, captures the water inundating everything in its path. And here, from the dike up here. I just kept thinking, where is this headed and who is this going to hit? While Denise is recording the unfolding disaster near the collapsed dike, Brad Street. William Camp is directly in the path of the flood, checking on his uncle's nearby home. We just want to go and make sure his house was safe and see if we could sandbag or, or help or salvage anything. Trapped by the flooding all around him, William starts recording the swirling torrent. Campers going, floating down the river. Boats oh, in front a, of it. Oh, no. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever imagined seeing RVs or trucks floating down, you know, people's driveways. Here goes the shed. Look, oh my God, the water's at the top of the wall, you guys. Oh. 